Hey, this is Jesus Castillo from rubyguides.com and in this video you are going to learn how to use scopes in Ruby on Rails. Exactly what are scopes and how you can benefit from using them in your Ruby applications. Let's do this. have the code but before we get started make sure to check out my website rubyguides.com and get a copy of my ruby book ruby deep dive that's going to help you improve your ruby skills and become a professional ruby developer now for today's topic we're going to be talking about scopes so what is a scope well, scopes are related to models. So remember in Rails we have model, view, controller, where the models are how you interact with the database, right? Controller is what actually controls everything. It's like the um, middle layer, the glue layer that holds everything together and makes decisions about what to do, uh, things like that. And then the view is what the user sees. It's the HTML, it's the layout, and all of that, right? So in here, I have this books controller, right? I have this index method. And uh, we also call these actions, controller actions in Rails. But basically, these are just methods, regular Ruby methods. Now, when we want to use this index action to print all of our books, we want to find the books that we want to show, and then we save them into an instance variable, right? But right here, I'm just querying for all of the books. But let's say that we don't want all of the books. We just want specific books. Like we want the books that have titles longer than 40 characters, for example. It can be any other criteria that you want to use. For this example, let's say that I just want titles that are longer than a specific amount of characters. How we can do that? Well, we need to use a where statement, a where method. And if you don't know the difference between where and find by, that's very important to know. So that's why you can find another video on this channel where you can learn the difference between where and find by. For this example, we need where. And what I want to find is the title and the title length specifically. So for that, I'm going to use a database function length, which takes the column name, and then we can say the title length needs to be greater than specific number. In this case, I choose 30. Okay, so that should work. And uh, if I save this, then I should be able to go to a Rails console. And inside the Rails console, we can quickly test where if this is working or not, right? And there it is, it seems to be working. And we can do other tests like 300, we see no books found with title length greater than 300. Okay, so this seems to be working. But the thing here is that this kind of verbose, and we might want to reuse this query, right? We might want to say again, hey, um, give me books with long titles. How we can do that before having to copy and paste this code? Well, that's where scopes come in. So if I take this code and I go to my model 
to the books model, then I can define a scope. How we define a scope? Well, that's very easy. We say scope, then we give it a name. Let's say long titles. Okay, now a comma, the miss this comma is very important. And we're going to say, we're going to create a Lambda. If you don't know what's a Lambda, well, I have videos, I have articles, you can go for Ruby Lambda or Ruby blog, and you will find one of my Ruby guides articles. And you can also find this in my Ruby book, Ruby Deep Dive, where you will learn about Lambdas, procs, modules, enumerable, and many other useful things. Now, this is our empty Lambda. What do we put inside the Lambda? Well, we want a query, an active record query, like this one, okay? But we don't need book because we are inside book already, as you can see. So we can delete book and we can leave this like that. I'm going to remove the extra space so it looks better. And that's the scope. As you can see, it's very simple, nothing special about the scopes. But this allows you to give a specific query a name, right? So now we can save this and I can go back I can go back to the controller. So let's go back to the controller. Here it is, and now I can replace this all of this code with um, long titles, which is the name of our scope, right? And if I go to my Rails console, we can actually test this, and I have to reload, right? Because Rails console doesn't auto reload code like Rails server does. So we have to reload when we make changes like this. And then I can do book, long titles, long titles. And there we go, seems to be working, right? So as you can see, we have several advantages for using a scope. And the main advantage, the main benefit for you as a developer as a Ruby developer is that now you can clearly see what this is doing, right? You see, oh, we're getting books with long titles, right? Of course, this doesn't say what it means for a title to be long. For that, you have to go to the scope definition in the model, but we get a good idea of what's going on in here. And the other benefit is that now we can reuse this. So if in this search uh, method right here, we want to only search for books with long titles, then we can combine this with the where. So we can do long titles where, and then Rails we combine these two queries together. We merge these queries so that we get books with long titles where the title has specific text in it. So that's one of the really nice things about scopes is that you can combine them with other um, scopes and you can also combine them with other Rails methods like where or find by, okay? So you want to use scopes whenever you have these kinds of queries that you might want to reuse or queries that are kind of complex, right? Like for example, this one can also be converted into a query. I mean, into a scope, right? And also a few things that you need to know about scopes. Scopes can take parameters because this is a lambda. We can do n and we can make this like that. 
and we can even have a different value so now if I come in here and I reload my Rails console and I do what's the name long titles long titles that still works but I can so the long titles um, 50 and then I can look for titles longer titles right I can do 150 well there's no such book with that title length so that's how you can parameterize this what is called parameterize or add a parameter to your scopes okay so that makes scopes even more powerful and helpful for you and one last thing is that you don't want to use default scopes if you read our default scopes you don't want to use them why because they're going to make your code harder to work with you're going to forget about the default scope or you're going to have situations where it doesn't apply well and you need to remove it. So it's better to not use a default scope. You don't need it. Just stick with these regular scopes as I show you in this video. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please click if you did, please click the like button for me, okay? The like button so more people can find this video and also will let me know that you like this kind of videos. If you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos now, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and visit my website, rubyguides.com rubyguides.com Thanks all for watching. I will see you in the next video.